Hello, I'm Claudia Kate, and welcome back to my channel. Today is the long-awaited Christmas haul. I got most of these items at the Lincoln Highway Byway sale earlier this summer, and then I've gotten a few since then, so I was just gonna show you everything. And, um, I, if you've watched my other Lincoln Highway Byway um, sale videos, then you know that I tried to pay um, only a dollar or less for every item that I bought. So I think I'll start out with my very favorite thing. I collect the Santas that um, are the spaghetti Santa. Now this one is filthy, but, and it's a, it's a shaker, but I collect these little ones, the Spaghetti Santas. I absolutely love them. I have quite a few. And we were in this barn, everything was dirty, cobwebs all over everything. And I found this one and I was so excited. So when I went up to pay, and he has been repaired. I don't care for my personal collection. I don't mind that, they, um, that they've been repaired. He's a narco. But when I went up to pay the guy, I said, you know, it's too bad that he doesn't have Mrs. Claus. I said, I only ever find one or the other. I never find a set. And he goes, hang on a second. He reaches down into a box where he was still getting things out of. And he pulled out Mrs. Santa. Ah! And she has not had a repair. I mean, she's filthy, but she's not had a repair. So if anybody has a hint on how to clean these without taking off the cold paint because you know I know that you can scrub the the spaghetti with a little toothbrush and just some dish um, soap but um, I these are just really dirty and I don't want to damage the cold paint so I have not attempted to clean them yet but that was a score, although he charged me another dollar for her, so I had to pay two dollars for them, but I didn't care because they were both there. I was excited about that. And I decorate, I used to when I had a big house. Um, man, I can't even remember how many trees we had up at one time. We decorated every room, top to bottom, and all the kids lived with me. And so now that I've moved into an apartment, and I'm living on my own and my adult children have taken all of their ornaments and things with them. Um, last year, which was my first year in this apartment, I just went with red and white in every room except my bedroom. And in my bedroom, I still put up my pink tree with my Victorian ornaments. So this Santa is going to go in there with my pink tree. What does that say? He was made in the Philippines and handcrafted in the Philippines. So little pink Father Christmas there. And then this one also will go into my bedroom. I think I may have paid more than a dollar for him. I think he was he was probably three or five. He's a a nice size just made in China but he was just beautiful I got a lot of these from the same lady and then I got this hobbyist piece painted in 1969 so sweet he'll fit right into my red and whites and this one will probably go up for sale at a Christmas sale or anything you see that I'm not keeping for my personal collection, you can email me at claudiakvintage at gmail.com and let me know what you are interested in. I can get back to you with a price. This is a home co. Still got a stopper. He's a bank. He's in great shape. I got this little blue guy because I liked his face. So 
so I'm not sure if I'll keep him. I don't know if since he's blue if he'll fit in with my all my Victorian pink things. But he was cute and I couldn't leave him behind. So he came home with me. And then I got a lot of tiny Santas. And I don't remember how much I paid for the whole handful of them. But I'll just show you everything that I got in there. So this tiny little Hong Kong Santa and two Pouncy Paul Santas. They're, they're rubber. And this little, is he Hong Kong as well? Yep, this little Hong Kong Santa. These look like cake toppers to me. So I wonder if that's what they were. They'll probably end up here when I switch everything over for Christmas at the end of November, these tiny little guys. Here's another one that he had, he was able to be hung. And this one, he doesn't feel like plastic. This one feels a little like ceramic, porcelain. I'm not sure which, but. Oh, and then this little magnet painted in 1980. It's got, okay. Just a little guy, just a little guy. He's gonna go on my fridge. If it's a red and white Santa, I am most likely keeping him. This little guy's filthy. He was a, well, he was a Hallmark. I have to see if we can clean him up a little bit. And then we've got, boy, these are dirty. Little rubber guy. This one was not within that lot, but he's a just a little moon face Santa or a little face of Santa in the shape of a crescent moon. He'll go right on my tree. And then this guy. Oh, he's filthy. He's one of the little clip dolls. But he's so cute. I'll probably sell him. And then that little lot of Santas came in a little Christmas box, which I'm gonna save for something I sell at Christmas or give away at Christmas. And this, I love this little candle snuffer. It's not vintage. I got that at a big barn sale too, but it is super cute. So candle sniffer, snuffer, sniffer, snuffer. I picked these up at separate yard sales. But this guy was two and he was a hobbyist piece from 98. He's wood. So I'm keeping him. And then these two little guys, I don't remember how much, oh, 50 cents a piece. That was a separate garage sale. And these are also wood. Keeping those, because I have a whole collection of the pencil Santas. Those go in my living room every year. And then I got an entire box of ornaments that she and her children hand painted one year. And they, um, she said that year, and she didn't give any details about why she was selling all of the Christmas stuff and none of her adult children were taking any of it. She seemed a little sad about it, so I didn't wanna ask. But she said that year, every single ornament that went on their tree was handmade. Years ago when her kids were little. So, and she was older than me. So it was sad, but I wanted them because they're pretty fantastic. So I paid $5 for this entire box of ornaments. I'll be keeping the ones that are red and white most likely, and then everything else 
uh, will be in a future sale or if you see something you can't live without, you can email me. Snow lady, there's a lot of, let me set this box down. And I can set these on the table. There's several layers of these and they came in a box like this and she sold me the entire box for $5. So, got this little Victorian boy. Little snowman and Mrs. Snowman, that one's sweet. Little mouse, aw, on the back it says, I'll love you always, Mark. Oh. And then there's some other ornaments thrown in here that they hadn't hand painted. So you've got a little red and white, a little teddy bear ornament. But most of them are these, this size. And my she had some talented kids. These look good. Oh, little mouse and a music note. They even painted the back of these. What year does that, does it say the year? Oh, I can't make that out. Oh, look at that. These are fantastic. mouse and a moon. I think that one was painted by JD. Teddy bear. Oh, that one's pretty. Three. These are all ceramic. Oof, they're dirty. Another little mouse one that says North Pole. Oh, look at the little Rudolph. Oh, he doesn't fit my color scheme, but I might have to keep him. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna guess that these were painted in the 80s. Because there's a goose with a blue hat. Couldn't get more 80s than that. A very Merry Christmas. This one's, I might keep that one too. That one's really pretty. Mouse. It's a little angel mouse. I love that the backs of these have just as much detail as the front. Candle. Now the mushroom makes me think they were 70s. There's a whole series of the mice ones and they're different on the bottom than the other ones. Because they're open on the bottom, they're thicker. There's more substance to them. <gasps> Kitties. Look at the kitties. Oh my goodness. That one's cute. cute. Red and white. Might keep that one too. So that'll fit my Christmas tree. There are, you guys, there are so many. <gasps> Look at this Santa one. Fantastic. Got a raccoon. I can't believe that I haven't come across any broken ones yet. So there's just layers of these. It's another mousy one. See thicker on the bottom. Oh my goodness. These mouse ones. 
I'm gonna have to lot all of the mouse ones up together because they are just adorable. Got an angel ornament. Little teddy bear. Ooh, I didn't break anything. Christmas tree and another Christmas tree. ornament. It's an ornament of an ornament. <laughs> Got a bell one. And again, I painted front and back of these. Another bell. An airplane with a mouse. Did they write the date? Hmm, I can't tell. Little bear. <laughs> Little mouse. Dad. Dad must have painted that one. The window scene. This is not painted on the back, which is unusual because almost all of these are painted on the back. Sad. Merry Christmas. Two kids from mom and dad. I'm sad that none of our kids took these ornaments. Little bear. I bought every year since my kid, each of my kids were born, I bought them an ornament and I would base it off of something they were interested in that year. So then when they moved out, they had at least 18 ornaments, although like my firstborn was the firstborn of me and all my siblings. And so that year, I think he got four baby's first Christmas ornaments because he was the only baby in the family. He was the oldest of all of my parents' grandchildren. This one says Dean. So if you're Dean and you would like this Christmas ornament, let me know. There are still two more layers. Oh, now we're getting into some Santa ones and I will probably be keeping all of the Santa ones. Pretty dirty down here in this box. So we've got this Santa. There again, they did the front and the back. They did just such a nice job. It's a clown. Oh, and that's the first one that has a chip. I've not, none of the other ones had any breakages, but the clown has a chip. Santa in his sleigh. Santa, ooh, I like that one. Santa, oh, that's a heavy one, Santa. There's Santa. Definitely keeping all of those Santa ones. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. Oh, it's so cute, all the mouse ones. Tiny little moon one, but this one should have had something else attached to it. Maybe, I wonder if it was this one, since this one didn't have a hook in it. stocking with a puppy in it. Oh, finally, there's one that is dated. Joe, 1986. I wonder why the Santa ones were at the bottom. Crazy eyes. I'm still keeping it. But they have crazy eyes. <laughs> Little drummer girl. 
I don't know. With the purple, it makes her look like a witch. Another Santa. It's quilted. Quilted, the look of being quilted. Kitty cat. No L. So last year in October, right before Halloween, somebody dumped off two, two, four cats, three kittens and a mama in, in the neighborhood. And so I checked with the neighbors and, um, oh, this one's missing, missing one too. And um, they definitely were not anybody's in the neighborhood. They had been dumped off and just shown up. So one of the neighbors up the street had put out a can of tuna. She um, worked third shift as a nurse. She had just come home. She'd seen them. So she put a, opened a can of tuna, set it out and went to bed. So, um, I'd left her note on her, on her door because the mom cat had come and found my dad who was out doing work in the garage. My dad's not a huge cat fan, but my mom had called me. We all live on the same street. And my mom had said, there's a cat down here. And so my daughter and I go down. This is when my daughter's still living at home with me. And the mama cat leads us to her three kittens. And so um, the mom cat was all black and she's just beautiful. And so we were worried about leaving a black cat outside um, right before Halloween. And it was cold and rainy. It was nasty weather, it wasn't nice. And so when she led us to the kittens, two of them were really sk skittish and ran back underneath uh, the porch and then they ran to underneath a car. But the third kitten was super friendly and just kept loving on Meg and she was able to pick them up and um, the three kittens were all tiger striped. And so we were able to get a hold of the mom and the one kitten, we couldn't get the other two. So we set up a live trap for them. We were able to grab them and bring them all home by the next morning. And um, so the mom cat for the next six days, went, she paced back and forth, cried at the windows, the she wasn't producing milk anymore but every now and then the biggest friendliest kitten would get to nurse she would she'd let him and then she'd bat him away and wouldn't let him nurse anymore the other two weren't nursing at all and so we'd put them on kitten food and i had called i'd called every shelter in the area and everybody was inundated with kittens and nobody could take them but they gave me some advice and so then i called around and i'd also found a vet so after six days, after, by then, now we're past Halloween, she took off. She escaped and took off and went back to the original house where she'd gotten the tuna. So I text that neighbor and so she started feeding her and she ended up getting permission from the, her landlord to let the cat in that winter into the garage because she wasn't allowed to have pets, but she did, the cat did overwinter in the garage. And then in the spring we saw her again um, a couple times and then never saw her again. So we don't know what happened to the mama cat, but the cats that you frequently see in my videos, two of those were the babies and they were the skittish ones. And um, the, the friendly one went with my daughter when she moved out. And the other two are Blue and Harley. Harley's the little girl and Harley was the most skittish out of all of them. She didn't like anybody. She wouldn't let anybody near her. When I went in to feed them, because we kept them in, a, in the bathroom for a while, so they were just in a small confined space, she hid under the dresser. She was small enough to squeeze under the dresser. And so I would make jokes that I had, um, I was gonna have an invisible cat for the rest of her life because no one would ever believe I had a cat. She wouldn't come out. And would you know, she is the friendliest cuddle bug to me now and there are a few people that come over and she lets them pet her not very many but she's far more friendly than I ever thought she would be and so that's how I got my babies so last year all of the ornaments on the tree were 
not breakable. <laughs> so we will see this year if I'm able to put any ornaments on the tree that are breakable. But here's another ornament with a cat. We've got just a couple more in this box. Is that another cat? No, I think that might be a fox, a mouse, a rat, a bunny, I don't know. Other animals. And the last one in this box is another Santa. So another one that will be going on my tree and hopefully my cats do not break them. And then I got one more thing, hang on. Cause you know, I don't edit videos. I picked these up at the flea market. These will be up for sale and they are not in the best shape, although this one's in better shape than the first one I had. I got all of these from the same person. Definitely have some wear. One more. So there's three of this kind, one of that kind, and one more clippy guy. So I have all of those. I got those at the flea market this summer. So that's my Christmas haul from the whole summer. And um, thanks for watching. I have my my Santa brooch on and my flamingo Christmas earrings with the Santa hat on them in honor of my Christmas haul. I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year. So I guess that's all for today. Remember, be kind. It doesn't cost you anything and it may mean everything to someone else.